This is the Oppressor Mark II. It's a flying bike that shoots missiles. This is a regular bike. This is what the Oppressor Mark II does to the regular bike. GTA Online is a big fun sandbox. Like Sid from Toy Story, half the fun is smashing the silly toy cars against each other to see which one survives. To me, GTA's combat is like one big game of rock, paper, scissors. Does your vehicle have powerful, accurate missiles? Well, my vehicle has thick armor to nullify it. To me, a vehicle can be good in three areas. Offense, defense, and agility. For example, the Night Shark has great defense with its armor. It has okay agility given that whilst it's quite quick, it's only a ground vehicle. But to balance it all out, it has quite poor offensive capabilities. The most balanced vehicles will only excel in one or two of these areas. This allows for vehicles to take on specialized roles, just like how each choice in rock, paper, scissors has their upsides and downsides. However, if a vehicle were to excel in every single attribute, well, that would be quite silly, wouldn't it? Oppressor Mark II launched August 14th, 2018 as part of the After Hours DLC. As you can see in its name, there came a younger brother before it, the Oppressor Mark I. It came with accurate missiles for its time. It had unparalleled agility for a ground vehicle. And what's worse, if you buy a clubhouse and enter your MC through an interaction menu, you can gain access to a feature where you can spawn your bike in wherever you are. Before this point, you had to go out of your way to use a weaponized vehicle. Now, a missile bike was in the back pocket of every player. Community reception to the Mark 1 was, in hindsight, hilarious. I think this bike is really OP, and I think that this thing is comparable to the next Hydra. This vehicle, I gotta say, is darn overpowered. Obviously, seeing a flying jet bike shooting missiles from the sky back then was very scary. However, the Mark 1 had a few key flaws. Firstly, the bike did not fly. It could boost with its jet engine for vertical height and could only boost again once its wheels touched the ground. What goes up must always come down, and this was when the opposing players could strike. Also, when the Mark 1 reaches its apex of its ascent, players on the bike are vulnerable to a well-placed snipe, as it takes a moment to deploy its wings and begin gliding. Despite not knowing it at the time, this is what balanced the Oppressor Mark 1. Oh! And the ability to deploy these counters would only become commonplace far too late for them to matter. Whilst people were upset with this vehicle, they would soon come to realize there was something far worse lurking just around the corner. As it stands now, it's way too easy to get blown up repeatedly by a toxic, unskilled Mark II player. Even then though, I still think the Oppressor Mark II with missiles is one of the most powerful vehicles in the game. If somebody masters this thing in flight, masters the missile speed, how to fire it at what angle, they can really abuse this thing to get a lot of kills. To begin, let's talk about flight. If the Oppressor Mark I is like the Elytra and rockets, where you fly up and glide down, the Oppressor Mark II is like creative mode, where you can fly forever on a horizontal axis. As a result, you can't count on a window of opportunity when they land, or when they begin gliding like the Oppressor Mark I. Not only that, it's quick. Very quick. For anyone standing on the ground, outside of a 1 in a million sniper shot, the Oppressor Mark II will likely kill you before you can kill it. Of course, if the Oppressor Mark II gets close, you can lock on with auto aim if you're playing on controller, but anyone with half a brain will stay away. The quick speed and small size makes it incredibly hard for anyone to land shots with regular ammo, and as a result, we can safely say the Oppressor Mark II's agility is excellent. Next up, let's talk weaponry. You have two viable options, explosive machine guns or homing missiles. Outside of ultra niche uses, the explosive MG is next to useless when stacked up against the homing missiles. The MG can only shoot directly in front of the Mark II, so to get a kill you need to stand still, which ignores all of the benefits the Mark II's agility provides. The homing missiles however are much more versatile. 
For starters, the tracking at launch was some of the most accurate missiles on any vehicle. If you managed to get a lock on even partially, the missile would track to and almost always hit your target. Pair that with its agility, and the Mark II could enter and win a fight in a matter of seconds. Very few vehicle weapon systems could outmatch the speed of these missiles, and only a very few could outtank its supply of 20 missiles before restocking. If you're not inside one such vehicle, and an oppressor Mark II sees you, you are almost guaranteed to die. You also have the option to free aim your rocket, which is great for hitting ground targets. A trap Mark II players fall into is driving straight towards your enemy, as this makes it easier to aim your rocket. However, uh, anyone with working thumbs will be able to snipe you off, since from their POV, you're an easy target. For best results, you need to always make use of the Mark II's agility. You'll be a much harder target to hit as you're always on the move. With all of this considered, it's clear that the Oppressor Mark II's offensive capabilities are astoundingly high. The cherry on top of everything we've seen so far were the countermeasures. You have things like flares, which remove the tracking from a rocket locked onto you, which can be good. But out of these options, one stood above the rest. The chaff, when activated, will prevent all missile lock-on for a few seconds. This allows for the Mark II to swoop in, destroy their target, and flee to safety without any risk of being shot back. One of the best counters against the Mark II was to use a vehicle with faster missiles, since whilst you may die, you can at least make sure you're killing them in return. But with the chaff, that counter gets completely removed from your arsenal. With that, the defensive options for the Oppressor Mark II were also incredibly high, giving the Oppressor Mark II a perfect 3 for 3 in every single category. Just having one or two exemplary features will make this vehicle incredibly strong. However, with all these different features paired together, the Oppressor Mark II was nigh on unstoppable for the regular player base. Oh shit, Moto! Oh! My god! Oh, the kid! No, get fucked! <laughs> That's not how this is meant to go. So, how did people find ways of countering it? Well, there were a few ways. The armor strat. The Oppressor Mark II has a capacity of 20 missiles before it needs to be reloaded. Most vehicles will be well destroyed before that point, but a few beefy vehicles can tank every single rocket. There's a number to choose from, but the most common and probably the most effective is the Night Shark. The Night Shark released in the same DLC as the Impressor Mark 1, but upon release, the Night Shark was regretfully considered big trash. Run that back. This, this car I, it, it was the most overrated vehicle that I've seen so far in GT Online, and I don't see anybody driving around with them in free mode. Everything changed when the Oppressor Mark II attacked. The insurgent could take 20 missiles before blowing up, the exact amount the Oppressor Mark II had, whereas the Night Shark could take a tasty 27. Even if you come close to death, you can repair your Night Shark at any Los Santos Customs, restoring your vehicle back to full health. Something I must preface, don't equip the armor plates on the windows. It'll block the windows and prevent you from using drive-by weapons. This means you can't throw sticky bombs, which is a very useful mosquito swatting tool, I must say. To break it down, thanks to its limited ammo capacity, superior armor will be guaranteed to keep you alive against the Depressor Mark II. If you want to trade defense for offense, you can instead use a missile car. Preferably, you want one that has faster missiles than the Mark II, as well as some sort of armor or ability to dodge the Mark II's missiles. There are a number to choose from, each with their upsides and downsides. The Deluxo has better missiles than the Mark II, but it has no armor, and you have to rely on your ability to dodge the Mark II's missiles, which can be inconsistent at times. Same story for the Scramjet. Better missiles, no armor, kinda hard to dodge, especially for new players on a consistent basis. In my opinion, the best two missile cars to fight against the Oppressor Mark II is the Stromberg and the Terreador. They both have very accurate missiles, practically on par with the Oppressor Mark II. It can tank a total of six missiles before getting destroyed, giving it great defense. And specifically for the Terreador, the rocket boost on the back gives it quite decent agility. 
Overall, thanks to certain missile car's superior offensive capabilities, paired with a little defense and luck, it can be rather easy to take on an oppressor Mark II and win. Another great option is aircraft, especially those with explosive cannons. The greater strength of the Mark II, the fact that it can fly forever horizontally, is also its biggest weakness. The oppressor Mark II cannot aim directly up or down, and as a result, it cannot aim its weapon outside of its narrow cone of vision. Because of that weakness, aircraft can dive bomb from a 90 degree angle to completely blindside the Mark II. Another benefit is that you're able to consistently dodge the Mark II's missiles in most jets. All you need to do is fly in a circle until the missile explodes. Consistently throughout its existence, jets have always been a thorn in the Mark II's side thanks to their superior agility. And that's where the oppressor Mark II begins to fail. If you noticed earlier, I didn't fill the Oppressor Mark II's attribute bars to the top, because whilst it was the most overpowered vehicle, there were other vehicles that prioritise and excel in one attribute. Sometimes, it's worse to be a jack of all trades than choosing to master one ability. So that's the Oppressor Mark II, and why everybody absolutely hates it. It's been nerfed since release, like a cooldown being implemented when spawning it from the MC menu, now taking 5 minutes to recall. And the missiles have been heavily nerfed, with them now being a fraction of their former speed and accuracy. But despite those nerfs, the reputation of this bike lives on, even though its former power may not. Hope you enjoyed, hope you found the new edit and style interesting and fun to watch. But if you do want more vehicle breakdowns like this, I'll be sure to make them. <sighs> Okay then, back to watching the GTA 6 trailer for the 2000th time.